Hey, is that folk music that you play there? What is that? How do you call that folk music? <laughs> I think it was Studs Terkel who asked Big Bill Brunzi, did he consider his blues music to be folk music? And Big Bill says, well, I never heard no horse <laughs> People they chase them rainbows far Wish upon a penny or a shooting star Or they play the market or the racetrack Leave a Las Vegas never coming back While I'm in the kitchen cooking up a pot pie You're just watching with your pretty blue Kids I sing a country tune and my pie rolls my life with you and five white balls and a power play where they pick their teams on New Year's Day a claim out west or a number one song they might just search their whole life long While I'm in the kitchen cooking up a pot pie You're just watching with your pretty blue eyes And my kids are singing a holiday tune And my pie rolls my life with you And no leprechaun let down his guard no treasure map ever got me far I never dug a nickel out of my backyard But I'm in the kitchen cooking up a pot pie You're just watching with your pretty blue eyes And my kids are singing an old Hank tune And my pot rolls my life with you While I'm in the kitchen cooking up a Watching with your pretty blue eyes And my kids are singing our favorite tune And my pie roll is my life with you My pie roll is my life with you And I'm the luckiest man that I ever knew And my pie roll is my life with you All right, all right, all right. The show is Horses Sing None of It. My name is Ralph Litwin, and our guest today is the winner of multiple awards for songwriting, Robbie Hecht. Welcome to the show, Robbie. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's great to be here. So tell us about that first song. Um, well, um, I kind of wrote that song about my own childhood, I guess. Um, I remember having dance parties with my parents to Kenny Rogers and eating a lot of pot pies. <laughs> I've actually never made a pot pie as an adult. Um, but I, that, that's just a couple of my favorite childhood memories and I made a song about it. Nice. Yeah, thanks. It's a great song. <laughs> thanks. So you, you come from Nashville. Well, I've been in Nashville for six years. Six short years. <laughs> How do you like it? Um, I like Nashville a lot. I like, um, I like that it's easy to live there. I like that it's close to a lot of things. It's easy to drive. It's easy to drive in any direction and, and be somewhere in a day. Um, and the music, the music scene is great there. The songwriters are great there. Um, I love, I love it. 
When I was there, I noticed everybody's friendly. Everybody is pretty friendly. I grew up in East Tennessee too, so I've kind of, um, when I came back to Tennessee, it felt, it felt there was an aspect of it feeling like home, even though I was in a different city. Just there's like a Tennessee vibe that you get, I think, when you're down there. Yeah. Yeah. What else have you got for us? Um, well, I'm going to do one. Um, I wrote this song when I was 30 years old. It's, it's kind of about um, just the mindset of being in your late 20s or early 30s and trying to figure out what you're, what you're doing with your life, especially when you're a singer-songwriter, trying to figure out what you're doing with your life. It's called 30. Second guessing, cause where would I start? Where would I start? I'm 30 years old. I'm 30 years old. And this time I figure out what am I doing here? What am I doing? You've won, some, you've won some prestigious songwriting awards. Yeah, I was, uh, um, I was, doing, I was uh, applying for a lot of contests for a while. Um, I kind of loved it. We, you get there and everybody's sort of like, why am I doing this? Like, songwriting's not supposed to be competitive, you know, but it's such a, I always thought it was like a really great way to meet people and to sort of be able to play a festival um, without having technically been booked at it. Um, it's a great, it's a great, I, th I just think it's a great way to sort of like enter um, different realms of the songwriting community and meet people you otherwise wouldn't know. Um, yeah, I've had a great, I had a great time with that stuff. 
Yeah. Do you want Telluride and yeah, there, Kerrville? The, yeah, the Telluride Bluegrass Festival's got the um, Telluride Troubadour competition. And I actually entered that, uh, I entered that in 2006 and I got second place. And it was the, the first contest I ever did. I got second place in the Telluride Troubadour contest and was like, I can't ever enter again because if I do and I don't win, then I'm like a failure. <laughs> you know, like, like you can't top second unless you, unless you win the thing. Um, but I finally, entered, um, I finally entered in 2010 because um, a friend of mine's band was playing the festival. A friend of mine ran sound and managed a band that was playing the festival. And I, was, and I figured if I entered the contest and got in, I could hang out with them. And then, and then I won it. <laughs> yeah, it was a really good time. It was really fun. And I got a really cool guitar, a custom, a custom guitar. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. Um, I guess the other, the other big one was the Kerrville, the Kerrville one. Um, that was really fun too. And it's been great to sort of get to be involved in the festival ever since, ever since that contest too. Um, and just the state of Texas, you know. It's been it's been great to be able to be involved and be able to go down there and, and tour as much as I'm able to. I think that really helped doing the new folk thing. Yeah, that's a prestigious one. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's it's fun to get I haven't actually gotten down I've been down there every year since, but I've never been down there the weekend they have the contest. So maybe that maybe this year. <laughs> yeah. What else would you like to play for us? Um I am going to, I'm going to do a love song. Um, I wrote this song for my wife before she was my wife. Um, she told me I hadn't written any songs about her and uh, all of my songs were sad. And so I wrote this song in response to that. This is an unsad love song that I wrote for my wife. It's called Never Let Go. Last few hours of the day till my worries wash away, darling. I ain't sad at all. I hold you in my grateful arms. Good Lord, holding up the stars, oh darling. I ain't sad at all. Never let go.
that's the way it's gonna be As long as you're in love with me, oh darling I ain't sad at all Never let go, my darling My darling, I'll be true Never let go, my darling My darling, I was in love with you My darling, I was in love with you Thanks. We should let folks know how they can find out more information about your performances and your recordings. Well, um, I have a website. Um, my name is Robbie, R-O-B-B-Y, um, Hecht, H-E-C-H-T, and so my website is RobbieHecht.com. Um, you can pretty much find out everything there. It's like a landing page that links out to everything else. It's like an airport hub where you can fly anywhere. Um, I think that's probably the best the best place to go. It's a nice website. Have you, you, have you checked it out? Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> we just redesigned it. <laughs> I don't know anything about web design. <laughs> um, we had this sort of convoluted thing with all these pages, and we kind of just made it like like a single page. I feel like that's I feel like that's kind of all you need. I got tired of updating things, mainly. <laughs> yeah, you can you can spend a good part of your day updating things on the internet and feeling like you're being productive, you know, when you could be writing or, or uh, singing for people. <laughs> Trying to streamline that stuff a little bit. Sounds good. Yeah. Take a step back into the past, maybe. <laughs> where, those, where those types of things weren't things that we all had to worry about constantly. Yeah. What would you like to play for us next? Uh, I'm going to do one. Those have all been off of my new record. I'm going to do one that, that's unreleased. I made an acoustic EP that I haven't done anything with. Um, and this is a song off of that. It's called Sugarland Mountain, um, which is Sugarland Mountain's a mountain in the Smokies near where I grew up. And I use it as the setting for this because I think it's cool sounding. Once I had a pretty little angel And she would blindly follow me Way up high on Sugarland Mountain Where I'd tell her only that I could see She was eleven, said there was nothing in this town. And I tried to hold on tight to something while that girl tried on that woman's gown. And Lord, help me hold on. Won't you show her the dark from the town? Lord, if I let go my little one, I know she wander away. When she was back. said, sir, 
I'm tired and hungry Could you spare some bread And a place upon your floor Well I gave him food And I gave him shelter While he wove us tales That made me smile And when I woke the next morning he was gone and so was my child Lord help me hold on my little one won't you show her the dark from the day Lord if I let go I know she will wander anyway. And all you fathers in this valley, give your angels wings to fly. For if you hold on, you may sadly lose your say goodbye and once I had a pretty little lady and she would mentions that your dad plays mandolin he does yeah he knew he knew when I was a little kid he knew one song he knew when will the circle be unbroken <laughs> so he turned constantly throughout my childhood and then he and then he started playing other songs um, but that that I mean as far as like folk music goes that and just like Paul Simon and Jim Croce and Ann Murray and stuff like that in the car. Some kind of combination of that. Just my parents' music. Somehow I got hooked on my parents' music. It makes me like, I'm like super uncool um, among, among young people, especially sometimes I tutor high school kids and they just, I'm just like not cool to them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he played mandolin. Um, he still does. He plays in a klezmer band now um, back in Knoxville um, where I grew up. A klezmer band in Knoxville. Yeah, they're called Dora La Dora. <laughs> One of two klezmer bands in Knoxville, Tennessee. Amazing. Not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they do weddings and, you know, yeah. He loves it. <laughs> yeah. He's been trying to get me to, to be into klezmer music for a really long time. Hasn't happened necessarily as far as, like, every day. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll join the klezmer band with him. Klezmer's fun. Yeah, it is fun. It's fun music. I don't do a lot of fun music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell us what you'd like to do next. Well, um, I'm going to do one. Um, I'm going to do one called Freight Train Lady. This is on my first CD. This is one of the first songs I wrote when I moved to Nashville. I actually had started writing it in my head when I lived in San Francisco before I moved to Nashville. Um, and then I finished it up when I was there. You got an E-flat harmonica? Yep. Sweet. <laughs> Got eyes in the moonlight, hair all up in 
curl Shining like an angel In her dress and plastic pearls She got an El Dorado She got a filthy mouth And she ain't like no other girl I've seen around And she's my favorite generational Bring me out, she's gonna roll me She can't wait to kiss me Whiskey on her breath And moaning about that old husband Cause he scares her half to death But he won't give her nothing And he hits her when she steals Well I got me a father So I know how that feels And she's my friend Generational Bring me out She's gonna roll me Roll me From this baby girl She's my favorite Training lady She's gonna tug me down At night She's gonna hold me She says when we leave here, we'll go all around. She done been to Nashville, but she says I got the sound. Well, I don't have much money, but I'm saving every dime to spend along the highway when she says it's time. She's my friend. Train.